And five, hey, four, hey, three, hey, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kevin Stay. She's that chick ain't that. Down. Welcome she to another podcast episode. Smash that, that, that like button. Smash that notification button. Bangers, 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 whole entire story because it took like 40 yeah. 45 and the minutes Patreon just saw it live we shot it before this we, we sure did so if you want to hear that and i'm sure you're very curious about angel's thoughts and stuff we didn't even do it like that no. to do that it just ended up taking three four sec three three segment times yeah. uh so we decided to put it on for the bonus because you know we know the patreon really wants to hear that stuff the broader audience might want to hear uh, current topics current topics uh church announcements real quick kev on station friends Live stream comedy show airs March 29th. I'll be straight up with y'all. I really need y'all help. If you, if we want to see black comedians, it's a, it's a it's a it's a community effort. I put my money up to put the show up, mm -hmm. right? Y'all pay the tickets, and if y'all pay enough, if we, if enough people buy tickets, it's something that I can continue. I want to introduce y'all the black community to black comedians. It's important to me. However, it's a business as well. So as a businessman, if it's a lucrative business, I'll keep doing it. If it ain't, I, I can't, I can't lose money do. doing it. Do. And, and I don't have the money. If I had so much money that didn't matter, if I was able to just sponsor this, I would. Got some sponsors who were interested. And that's why another reason why I spun it up, but it's got to make fiscal sense. Uh, so if you want to support black comedy, buy your tickets. You get buy to watch it all tickets. weekend. You live stream. If you just want to watch Club Shay Shay and see beef, then just do that then. Oh, well, I don't eat beef, so come on. I need to And listen, it. I'll tell you, all the comedians are amazing, but CP is a star amongst stars. Oh, He's man. worth the ticket alone. He's a comics comic. He's a comics comic. He's in your favorite. He is a rising star. In the next five years, he should be having his own show. Uh, I think, personally, they're going to talk about him like they talk about the greats, if you ask me. He's one of my favorite comedians. CP. CP. He is one of the funniest uh -huh, people. Great. He is the hardest person that I ever act with. Him and Tony Baker are the hardest people I ever act with um, that... To, that I uh, that make it hard for me to keep character. He uh he played Breesha's boyfriend on Run the World the so last dead. season. Uh huh. Uh, and she said he was amazing, just amazing. amazing to work with. In Love Life on HBO, he was outstanding. So uh, support support him. Uh, seventeen dollars. Link in my bio. Love y'all. All right. Shopmamalikes.com. Beauty products. Get over there. Nothing's over twenty dollars. Moisturize your face. Scrub it up. Do a mask and get that makeup off. Cool. All right. First also, thing on shouts to Asaprozog, Doc Policy Genius, and One Skin for sponsoring the podcast. We'll talk more about them later. Okay, Kevin. Nice. Bang, bang, yeah, bang. I am Wawa. I've been trying to figure out how to do a Club Shay Shay parody for promo, um, and I haven't figured out a way that doesn't feel like I'm throwing shots at Shannon. Uh, shots that can't be defended with comedy, but if I crack it, I will definitely shoot it because I've been having a time promoting these, and then promos go absolutely nowhere. Um, oh, I can't. You want me to help you give you a Club Shay Shay? What? I do. I got you. I need to lean on my friendship with you. You could be Monique. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The first thing is Boeing. What what is happening with the Boeing plans? They falling apart, Kevin. They I mean wheels is falling off. Panels is falling off. When I worked down to the Boeing, I made sure stuff was on the up and up. And did you? The moment I left, what you like? Mat, I was tinkering. I had my screwdriver. You see uh, Manny Man Fixes Manny stuff? Yeah. I got my new show on Instagram. You think I just started fixing light bulbs and, and socket covers? I built, when I was at Boeing, I built each plane by hand, personally. Uh, that's what I thought. Every 737 for my entire two years there, every part went through me. I had the hat on. With the goggles, OSHA. Did you really? I saw but on one of welding. the wings. I was looking at the wings, and I saw your say it said Kev on planes, and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> exactly right. I hid that. Uh, yeah, I said it said Kev on planes. There's 278 Boeing 737s flying these friendly skies right now that I personally built. Don't claim that. Okay. Don't claim and that. And then when <laughs> I left, <laughs> no, 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 the moment I left. They started the Max program. They said, Kev's not here. We ain't got to worry about quality control no more. Let's maximize profits. I said, now we got to focus on safety when I'm right, here. Right, right. As, as leader of Boeing, we got leader to focus on, of Boeing. on safety. I, yeah, I was also the CEO. 
Oh, oh. I was personal. Yeah, and had never you, been done before. Oh, you gave that up for comedy? I gave that up for you my gave dream. That salary up for comedy. Damn. I was the Evan. only dual welder builder no, CEO you know, uh, uh, in plain history. Trifecta. Airbus was on your boy. Mm -hmm. Airbus was like, we got the A380. Come over to oh, Airbus. They, they I sent said, a headhunter to come. They, get they headhunter, and it's a big one because I got a noggin. <laughs> they sent two, <laughs> one for each half. <laughs> but I said, y'all, I got to get to LA. I can't be building planes my whole life. This is just something right. I do for fun. Um, so when I left, things start happening. The thing that sucks about this whole Boeing thing is we are still currently flying Boeing yeah. planes. Oh We're yeah, like, well, let's try it again. <laughs> Well, because anybody when, when died. When I look on our flight, nobody's died yet. So that's the, that's they're like, but is you that seat belt. But when you, you go die? To sleep, go, when you go to sleep, wear that seatbelt. Right, but did and, you die though? Listen, and that's why, because last week, last time we went on tour, something was wrong with the planes twice. Oh yeah, yeah. that was and when the Maxis first kicked off. They said yeah. we got to go back in. We was looking at each other like, go back in and fix it. Fix it? No, get me. I that's always want a new fear. plane. That's get my me the new fear plane. Is going to sleep with the seatbelt off. And then me wake up and I'm just in the air. I'll be like, ah, right. Are you up to meet him? Lord, why am I looking at you? Oh, are you going to the sky? You might as well keep going in there. We got a straight, a one way to heaven. No, you ain't stop. never going to land. You just go on. Just go on, take me up to the Lord. You go wake up in the upper room. Now, where did the wheel go when it fell off? Where did it fall to? It landed on the baby. It, oh, no, no, it didn't, <laughs> Kevin. It broke a baby's leg. <laughs> I thought it landed on just a bunch of cars in the parking lot. No, man, it, it broke a baby's on leg. Car and lot. One baby? One baby's leg. Name was was Terry. Stop it. <laughs> Terry. Anybody naming babies Terry anymore? Uh, Terry babies Terry? Yeah. I don't remember babies Terry, but adults Terry. No, no, naming babies Terry. Oh, Terry. Just Terry. No, I uh, you know, I thought it was always either Terrence or Teresa, and then we we nickname them Terry. Oh, people's name ain't Terry? Just straight up Terry? Back, yeah, I don't think so. Back to the wheel. That landed. That landed in. <laughs> nah, the, Josh, we focusing on oh Terry's man, right now. I thought we were Terry in the spirit. That's how much That's of a church evil. kid I was. I was like, baby, Terry, <laughs> 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 Okay, sorry. The wheel. Back to the wheel. It landed in an employee parking lot. You know how pissed I would have been. <laughs> yes. You already hate that job enough. And you go out and you don't got a car. It's just a little no. piece of crap. That thing would have imploded. And I've been like, you know that you destroyed my Maybach. And they'd be like, but we see a Corolla emblem. I switched that out. It was a Maybach. Straight people. Yeah, because then people would try to rob me. What they call it? The bip? They be bipping. <laughs> San Francisco had to switch it out. So my, my Maybach that was $300,000, y'all ruined. So I'm gonna need that check, and I need it cash actually. Yes, because we just, don't need it, all it's this. It's easier. You you gotta put it on a wire, right? You don't want to do that. I'm gonna put it in my offshore account, and I can't give you those numbers because then it's onshore. If I give you the numbers to the account, <laughs> so give it to me cash so I can put it in the offshore. Absolutely, I have a better car than Man, what, what I was started your name? with. Terry, my baby's name is Terry. <laughs> Terry. <laughs> the Patreon said people's people's full name be Terry. Um, Terry Cruz. But is his name Terry? I don't know. I bet you his name is Terrence. He looks like he, he looks he like, like a, a Terry. Terry. He looks like a Terrence. His name is. Was Jeffrey? His name is Terry Allen Cruz. Oh, they said they stopped. Terry they Allen. said Terry. But he's fifty-five. I'm talking about new Terry. But his name is just Terry. Okay, well, good good for him. You ain't even family, Shirley. Terry Bradshaw is just a Terry. This is what this podcast is about, man. Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> this is is that we, a real person? I thought that derailed. was a character. Yeah. Terry, no, Terry Bradshaw is a quarterback. Who, oh. Terry Paxton Bradshaw. Then who's the person on uh, Sex in the City? Carrie Bradshaw. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Got it. I was like, Terry Bradshaw ain't no real person. It's a white lady that dresses up and has a lot of sex. <laughs> Yeah, this is very silly, and I don't care, and I don't care what y'all think. I use Wikipedia probably once a day. Yeah, Wikipedia is the I way be, to go. I be looking stuff up, and everything on Wikipedia is true. 100. Did not dawn on me for a long time into my Wikipedia time. You can search within Wikipedia. You don't oh. have to Google. And, like, you know, you click around on Wikipedia. But they also has to search within no. there. You don't. You shouldn't do that. It only is accurate if you search via Google, and Google <laughs> takes you true. over. You got to go back out. Yeah, you got to go back out. Come in. Because the Wikipedia search 
They that's that's very um racist. But Google, it shows you what you're actually looking for, which is the truth. Oh my god. Uh, they said on the plane that flames shot out of one of the engines. To me, that sounds Angel, like a Vegas that show. that happened on the same flight <laughs> that we were going to Houston the day before. The, the flames? Yes, that's the plane that landed like this. I thought that was the, the one who didn't have the wheel. No, the wheel was a Dreamliner leaving from SFO and landed it back at LAX. Oh, okay. Because they had to reroute it. You, how you mess up on a 45-minute flight? No, 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 no. It was going overseas, but they said, hey, the wheel came off. We, oh, and they we need, we need to land. Got it. it. I remember when I was, go ahead, Angel. It sounds like, have y'all ever bought some strappy sandals that you done wore for so long? Girl. And then all of a sudden, the, the part that's supposed to thong part that goes just lets out. That's mm -hmm. what it sounds like. It just <laughs> did too much. And it said, fuck you today. That's. Bloop, and then all you got is just the, the the little sole underneath your foot, and you gotta you gotta just hold your toes close to it so the thing don't fall off. You can't do that on a plane, though. When go I ahead. be bored and enjoy, uh -huh. when I go to the door, I be like, you be touching and praying. I be like, I don't know what this is, but let me touch this mixture. When y'all close it, close it tight. Well, Kevin, you the only one that gets to actually see the outside of the plane because you be driving up in oh, the yeah. little things. The rest of us is coming in from a building. And I Kev, come from outside and I'll be like. daps up the maintenance crew on the way in. I'll be like, what's up, my boy? They'll be like, big care. I'll be like, big, big don't. And so you need to be, a, you need to look because we can't get a good vision. Take that same screwdriver out that you had at Boeing mm -hmm. and go around the plane. I know. E -e -e -e. Listen, and these planes be big, but they look like, it don't look like they didn't really built new planes in my opinion. Well, that's I feel what like most they people just don't renovate understand. the inside. Them planes, y'all, I don't, people they don't, old. planes be flying 20, 30 years. You not spending the money it costs for a plane to be turning them in new. 20, 30 years. They I fly good, long. Them, you got a whole bunch of 87 Civics in the sky. That's what they look like. A whole bunch of Honda Accords. A whole bunch of, boy, it ain't nothing but the Toyota Camry of the sky. Eventually, you got to get a new Camry, though. But they don't want, they're like, no, because, you know, a Camry, you could put, 300, 375,000 miles on. And they said, we going to do that. We're going to rock it till the wheels fall off. Ain't that what the saying is? And they did it. <laughs> they said, y'all want to keep, y'all want to <laughs> rock it till the, and listen, every time it goes, they be compressing all that time. Yeah. And then you know they, they don't throw planes away. Dude, they got them. Kept, they go, that was fun. There we go. <laughs> every time they go, they be compressing all that air, all that pressure. You know it come in on there. You got to replace that stuff. That looked like the beginning dance routine of an R and B singer doing a uh, a Las Vegas show. Like I could have seen Usher doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes <laughs> when I'm around you, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <why>. <laughs> Now, listen, I don't know if you found out, Angel, you heard. Now, Patreon put this in a couple weeks ago in the, in the, in the uh, dock, and we didn't get to it. Shout out to y'all for, I be meaning to shout y'all names out, and I do forget every time. But uh, what happened? I thought this was from the iron, but now it seems like, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay, like you was breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Um, Yoda. They had put that in the docket that the man who blew the whistle, shout out to Too Short, on Boeing, <laughs> recently he had passed away due to the... Oh, and conspiracy theorists are saying they saying that he, you know, what I'm saying so he was the wheel didn't actually fall off. That was him. Yeah, they said no. he was wrapped around the <laughs> thing and they cut it, and, and then he died. And he on the and call. Listen, when that, when that, I saw that, I said, I'm not, I, I'm just playing, y'all. I didn't really have. I want to uh, allegedly go back and put allegedly in no, front of all uh -uh. my jokes. No, because I he told you. He said, "Don't say." I that. said. And you said, mm, I had the hard hat. Because mm -hmm. listen, these are these are billion dollar corporations. Yes. And I don't play. And you were the CEO, Kev. No, oh, man. I, I just was a scheduler. Oh, now, now you were kidding, Kev. I was just playing. That's what that All I did, my whole job, just for clarity, it was focus. I didn't never <laughs> I didn't touch, just never touch the plane. Personally, all I did, I was a scheduler. If Josh bought a plane, he sent me the. I put he get the line number. I did not buy make a plane. model. Joshua don't, Robert don't, Gonzalez. Don't throw me in there. <laughs> uh, Ventura County, California. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Different ones. Uh, Gonzalez is in, in I would Dark put Track the Africa. make and model in. You know the line number, wing type, things like that. Uh -huh. I would enter that information into the Brian, to the program. Into the program. I press enter. 
And then I go back and to YouTube. And then it builds the plane. And, and then, then somebody so if you else press down enter on something else wrong. Then the plane don't get built. Here we go, okay. And no, no, no. Like this, no. They're coming about to out put the front of it. Put put All head. I did was glorify data entry. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was a wing. I say that now, but they're not going to put this part in the documentary, Kev. Shout out to Astro Pro for sponsoring this episode and providing us with free samples. Let me tell you. We got allergies in our house. My husband, he definitely has them. And sometimes it actually comes up for me too. This is a product that I use and you should too, okay? So anytime there's like a nasal allergy flare up, let me, it's amazing how fast Astapro puts us back in the game, okay? Astapro's always got my back in my nose. Astapro is the first of its kind nasal allergy spray. It is the fastest 24 hour over the counter allergy spray. It starts working in 30 minutes while other allergy sprays take hours. Astapro is the first and only 24 hour steroid free allergy spray. Astapro delivers full prescription strength indoor and outdoor allergy relief from nasal congestion, runny nose and itchy nose and sneezing. Achoo. <laughs> Get fast-acting nasal allergy symptom relief with Astapro. Go to AstaproAllergy.com for a discount so you can Astapro and go today. A-S-T-E-P-R-O Allergy.com. Astapro. It's faster, bro. Use as directed for relief of nasal congestion, runny nose, sneezing, and itchy nose due to allergies. Oh, my God. I was watching this great documentary on PBS. Yesterday. Who was you watching? It was on gospel. Music? Yes. I came in right when they started talking about Kurt Franklin. Ooh. And they were talking about how gospel music started to infuse more R&B and hip hop. And gospel music was starting to be created to not actually be sang in church, but to reach people outside of church. Mm. And then they went into, um, like, so then they talked about Mary Mary. Um, they talked about Yolanda Adams. And then they began to talk about some uh, churches, how churches changed because of the pandemic. And a lot of people had to do digital churches and stuff. And as I was watching, I was like, we gonna end up in this documentary. And that's why I kept thinking, I was like, oh no, oh no. Did we, or you ain't finished? I, no, I only finished episode two. But I was like, this feels like I'm about to hear Kevin's voice being like, here's the thing, church is whack. <laughs> I That's how all our documentaries, they will cut up the one sound bite that's yes. in the middle of a, a presenting oh, yeah. and a clarifying sentence. Yeah. And they'll take that little sound bite. And black people don't love Lizzo. That ain't what I fully said. Mm, yeah. I said on Twitter, we don't need that part. And we don't need the end. Because at the end of that statement, I said it. That's the, that's the best example of that. I said, here's what they say about this is how black people on Twitter talk about Lizzo. Black people don't like Lizzo. But I personally love her. They was like, perfect. Just Mom. gonna cut that part out and cut Put that part out. out and take that part out and make it seem like she's listening to my words. Yes. Even no, though she probably was listening to music. And now you got me on the documentary. Yeah. And the BS High as well. And the BS I just knew. They talked about uh they talked about what's his name? T D Jakes. They talked about women, uh women thou are loose into women evolved. I was like What was the name of this documentary? Gospel. Oh, it was just called Gospel? Uh huh. But I'm I don't know. First name's part. Terry. Huh? Who? Isn't T.D. Jake's first name Terry? His name Touchdown. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Terry Dwayne Jakes. Tub Down. Touchdown Jakes is his name. Yeah. <laughs> name Thomas Dexter. Dexter. But anyways, that was a digress. I just, something about when you were talking about the plane. Is it Henry you... Louis Gates on there? The talking? Henry Lou? I don't remember. Light skin man glasses? Kind of chubby? That sound right. No, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Don't get me that line. They sang Total Praise at the end. That's when I realized. Top tier gospel enough. song. It is the best. Lord, I will live. Come on, sing, Kev. Mine eyes. Come on. To the Come on. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Knowing my head. Come on. Is coming from you. Strength. 
do 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 You are the strength of my life. Bum, 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 bum. So pray Sorry. to you to the end. Amen. Skip one, oh man, because I thought we were skipping to the end. Oh man, nice! <laughs> Joshua. Oh, All right, my moving vocal on. Vocal cords are fried. <laughs> oh. to stop doing it. He was getting up there. I was just like, well, <laughs> you don't know how to hold back. No, it didn't hurt it, but I know that I have more power, and it was like, you don't. <laughs> I'm so mad, guys. Moving on. I want to talk about real quick until we get to the other subject. <laughs> Smokey Robinson. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Tony posted this video. You about to do it, Angel? Oh, my God. Smokey <laughs> Robinson had me <laughs> Get your microphone, Angel. <laughs> He had that gasm. He had them gasms going. He was so. Whoa. <laughs> he was in his head. He was killing. Oh my God. Tony said he was looking for his keys. <laughs> it's the sexiest looking for his keys. Oh ever. my God. It was Smokey, so what, 83? I don't know. He 80. He I thought believe. he was still 35. Duh. I don't even 70s. think Smokey was. Like and I I don't know I wasn't a part of Smokey's ascension he eighty four I wasn't a part of his ascension but I thought he was like you know temptation I thought they were here I didn't know Smokey Robinson was selling he sex been. he can't he do has that an album called Gaza I know I'm talking about young smoke well he's not young smoke no more he <laughs> old smoke okay. He that last bit of like smell from the grill right after you cut it off. That's sex right now. If sex at 84, you just get it hard, put it in. And you Listen. wait. You wait for a gasm to come. You're not pumping. You just you wait. Stuff it in. You pump it in. It's coming out. Yeah, you just set it in there and you wait. You, you folding wait a half done gummy worm, <laughs> folding it up in the coop. <laughs> no. You stuffing it in there. No, he used the pillow. He got the blue. Get he got the blue chew. He put it in there and you just wait for it. And that's it. <laughs> that's why it's a gas. It goes it's off fast. like a cap. <laughs> and then you take it out and you look for your key sexy like. Oh my God. Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah. There ain't no way. And he really did that. He with his dyed jet black hair and his tight <laughs> pants. He's like, they want it. They want it. That's the audacity of an 84-year-old man. An 84-year-old man is like, they still want this body. Oh, I love it. I love it. I would have yelled and laughed, but yelled, yes, Smokey. <laughs> you can't. And this is the problem. That's you, you are exactly the problem, Angel. Then people in there had to be gassing him up. Oh, I'm the key word to gasms is gas. Yeah. If you got people yelling, they you going to think. I'm going to put that 93 octane right in them hips. Give it, Smokey. Yes. Break that pelvis. <laughs> I'm going to do that to Liz. I'm going to come in the bedroom. Yes. I, and just hold it. The fact that you're saying you don't already do that to Liz is a surprise to me. I, that's what I would think you would be doing with your goofy ass self. <laughs> Get these gasms. Whenever you got to take that ore off of there, you know you at a certain age. Take that what? The ore off of the gasms. Oh, the ore. Because <laughs> the ore is, 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 uh, denotes the O face. The oh, That's not happening. Oh, that's it. oh man. 
hell. <laughs> Smokey ain't giving the old face. He, he He's just doing. That's just it. That's how you know. It's a hard blink. You done, baby? Mm-hmm. He probably passed his back after. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> he, got a, he got a burp after. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's it. That's it. He done shot off. Let that man go to bed. <laughs> I want to go to one of his shows. First I'll off, be- and the woman's like, you okay, baby? Mm-hmm. I'm tired now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Smokey goes sleep in time. I sleep. So. I made it full. But uh, he can't listen. He gives a sh- listen. I love showmanship, regardless of how nasty it is. And we all should. We should all aspire to be doing shit that's no longer age appropriate. 1,000%. When we saw Genuine moving that furniture, thinking he was moving like the pony that he used to be. <laughs> and he fell off the stage? And also that. First, I was thinking about when he was moving the furniture. Oh, the dance move. Yes, and then when he did his giggity giggity. <laughs> right? We all should aspire to keep doing shit past what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, listen, I want to do stand-up until my stuff ain't funny no more. I want to be like, you know, the uncle up there just doing what he loves. Mm-hmm. You know, he just, he loves doing it. He, yeah. he hasn't been good in a while. I'm going to be in there telling the same type of jokes at 84. You see, Lenny Williams was doing his little dance, too. Oh, he. Lenny Williams, she took my draws. You don't remember that? No. Jo- I started rapping at 42. Do, sure listen, that's when Williams. you should be retiring. I said, put me in there, coach. We talked about this. But I don't remember no dance. Well, he was he just kind of stands there. With the side swoop. Oh, and he claps. That's when you know you. Said you're going to put it on TikTok. Why is it so dark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just did a light above his head. There's no... Yeah, I know the song. Hotel. Raw day, but he's singing for the perfect like jazz festival, the street festival Big where the Montreal vendors. Jazz festival. Oh hell yeah! She took my draws. Can I get a two piece <laughs> catfish <laughs> with white white bread? Yeah. I'm gonna put that on the TikTok. She took my draws. I love it. All right, moving on. We want to talk about now. Let's talk about Bruno Mars real quick. Oh talk- yeah, he gambling. Here's the thing that's funny about this. This is my fear. Like, I, I want to be bigger in this industry. But my fear is when stories come out about you, wh- it's just sources. Right. Nobody's going to say they the said The sources it. said he's $50 million in debt. And I, I didn't see any reputable side. I mean, like CNN, NBC, NPR, something like that. I seen a lot of rap daily, Charles's Mike TV even like the source, I believe, funny enough, no pun intended, I think the source covered it. I don't know if they even have a magazine in circulation anymore. They might just be fully digital. Uh-huh. But the crazy thing about this now, I can't reveal who told me this, but an industry friend, and I'm talking about months ago, uh-huh. we was talking about Bruno Mars just casually. I think we was talking about the Vegas show. Uh-huh. And that person told me, there was like, uh, you know, off camera, like, you know, you got a gambling problem. That's why he plays Vegas so much. And I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, he's super deep in debt. Uh, he makes deals that he pays, he clears his debt by playing shows. Mm-hmm. Again, just a person. Uh-huh. Could be completely made up. So when I heard this, he I was said, like. Well, look at that. I one said, plus one equals two. MG- MGM said Bruno Mars is not in gambling debt. Does not have? This is Business Insider, Yahoo. They well, MGM he ain't, ain't no. going to be like, yeah, that nigga owes 50 million. And oh now he's going to be playing that thing yeah, until he dies. He's going to be right at the park MGM. Vegas is trying to get away from gambling as their main attraction. Uh, oh, they yeah. want they want to focus on entertainment, Residences. family fun, and food. And food. Apparently, uh, gambling is not even their number one revenue generator anymore. I don't believe it. Food and entertainment, I mean, they make a lot of money on gambling. Don't, don't get me wrong. But I go to Vegas, and obviously I don't gamble heavily at all. Sometimes we play blackjack, but it's never more than $100 to $100. Some people go to Vegas and have an entirely different experience. Right. Listen, Bruno, I wouldn't be surprised if he did have a gambling ish problem. I mean, Bruno had been through a lot in life in his in his little life. So if that's the if that's the case, as long as he's able to pay it off, do yeah. his little songs and whatnot, <laughs> sing a little bit, do what he got to do. But listen, Kevin, this is what you get. I can promise you, you will never hear from me. Uh, a source said. That Kev on stage has something. 
It's going to say Angel. That chick Angel said, you're going to know. I'm not going to hide if I say some shit about you. Put my name in there so this nigga know I said it. Oh, my God. It's never. So if you ever see it, it says <coughs> a source said, know that I didn't say it. It's going to be you? No. If you it ain't going to go down to the alley on me? If it says a source said it, you know it's not me. Oh, if it's it, not you. Because Angel going to make sure her name's in the write-up because I need it for my EPK. I need it for my press kit. <laughs> I'll be like, uh uh-uh, uh, because somebody else gonna try to take credit. I don't want to hear or something or Tony taking credit. Angel said it. Put it in there. Yeah. <laughs> Never be just the source. But he go listen, even if he does, I'm not saying he does allegedly, allegedly, uh fifty million to him ain't fifty million to a uh, fifty million to us is an insert. We don't even get that line of credit. They don't I don't they don't give us the ability to spend fifty million. Fifty million to Bruno. He he might he make. Uh, they said his contract for with the MGM was ninety three million. Uh, but that's still a lot. If you lost half of your money right now, your butthole tighten up. But it'd be inside out. <laughs> I'd be having hemorrhoids. What are hemorrhoids? That's when your booty hole turn inside out, ain't it? That's the polyps. So the polyps what is your butt is inside out? out? Your anus, the, in, the inside tissue of your anus, pokes out into Peaks little out. little bubbles. It's a little polyps. Mm-hmm. So how you put a cream on it? How does that help? It, it make it go back. Reduces to- like because so like a steroid cream helps with inflammation, so it reduces the size and they can- and it go back in. Yeah, it go back. It'd be in. like I think it's still in there. It just be on the inside. But it helps. It reduces the mm. uh huh from straining mm. constipation. Constipation. Your booty hole was like that heavy. Ah! Uh-huh. And it was and out. Sometimes people who have a lot of anal sex, they can get the hemorrhoids. Oh, anal sex. Yeah. The booty turn inside out. But it, the, they come out with the head. With the penis come out? and The, the helmet. The helmet. The helmet comes. But you right know, the helmet out. got the little ribs on the That's side. That's what it said. Come on out. You take a little booty with it on the it's way like out. A parachute. <laughs> take a little booty with it on the way out. It's a smoky on the way out. They said it's blood vessels. Uh, I, when I was a kid, I had a ringworm and I had put, I had put monostat polyps, sebum okay. on my hand. Oh, we was, talking about prolapse booty holes. They correcting us. Hemorrhoids is veins. Go ahead. That's prolapse. Y'all right. What's prolapse? When the booty hole come out. Booty hole come out. Yeah, hemorrhoids him is, is veins. like hemorrhoids is blood vein, but blood vessels. But uh huh, mm. enlarged blood vessels, the swollen veins. Hemorrhoids are swollen veins. Oh, so that's why the cream unswells them. Take it back down. Mm-hmm. Go on here, though. Um, when I was a kid, I had to get um, put monocet on my hand. It was for yeast infections. Oh, the veins could be so big they go on the outside. I'm looking on Wikipedia. Let me see. Booty hole brown. Somebody's hilarious. Somebody's. <laughs> oh, that's a real. Okay. That was a real. That was button. somebody's. Him. A lot of these were digital. These were drawings and they just did on the, on the 17th. You see their image? hands like this? It was just a, it was just a booty hole brown. Um, <clears throat> all right, moving on. Uh, want to talk about <clears throat> get the booty hole. Are you that one friend in the friend group that loves to treat yourself? It's okay. Honestly, we all do. You know, you get a pedicure and opt for that extra 10 minute foot massage with a green tea infused lotion. Absolutely. Refuse to make coffee at home because the fancy coffee coffee shop is right downstairs. Or you opt for that extra leg room on the plane because your vacation starts now. Or do you always buy double at a sale because it's actually like saving money? Well, if you treat yourself to the top option with everything in life, why settle for finding a doc when finding a doctor? It's your health after all. Enter ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book tens of thousands of top tier doctors, all with verified patient reviews. So don't settle. Go for the best and find the right doctor for you. With ZocDoc, you got more options than you know. ZocDoc is a free app in a website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. And these docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients. We're talking about booking appointments with tens of thousands of top rated patient review, credible doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones that take your insurance, are located near you and treat basically any condition you're searching for. The typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is just between 24 and 72 hours. That's it. You can even score same day appointments. We've used ZocDoc many a times in my house, especially when we were looking for a primary care physician for my husband. And it made this, the process so simple. And we found a doctor that we love. Go to ZocDoc.com slash SK and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's ZOCDOC.com slash SK. ZocDoc.com slash SK. 
Let me tell you, when it comes to financial planning, a lot of people forget that life insurance is actually a part of financial planning because baby, even though you gone, don't mean that your bills are okay. Make life insurance a part of your financial planning this year. Start shopping now with policy genius to find the right policy to protect your family. Getting life insurance today means you'll have the peace of mind so that if something were to happen to you, your family can cover expenses while getting back on their feet. Luckily, policy genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. There were many times where I wanted to get life insurance, but the process was so daunting and I didn't know who I could trust. And when I tell you, when we heard about Policy Genius and I used them, they simplified the process. They took all the angst that I had away because I had a team of licensed experts that were able to help me find the policy that was right to help protect my family just in case. You know, something happens to me and now I have such a peace of mind to know that my boys and my husband will be a OK. Um, Policy Genius technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Even if you already have life insurance policy through work, it may not offer enough protection for your family's needs and it may not follow you if you leave your job. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at $292 per year for a million dollars of coverage and some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius has licensed award-winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Save time and money and provide your family with a financial safety net using Policy Genius. Hit a policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. Rena, Regina King has started to talk about losing her son. I want to play this little clip. She was talking to Robin Roberts about grief. Two years since his passing, and you took some much needed and much deserved time away. Yeah. What has this time span, these last two years, been like for you? Oh, wow. Um, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a different person, you know, uh, now than I was um, January 19th. Um, I am. Grief is 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 a journey, you know. I, I understand that um, grief is love that has no place to go, and that we all um, handle it differently. The clip that I saw, she she talked about losing him. Uh, he he was lost to suicide. Yes. She talked about that in a way I have never seen a parent talk about that. I fully agree. My mind was a little bit blown. It was so interesting. She was like, <clears throat> I was trying to play it. So trigger warning. I'm sorry. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. Yes. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. My apologies. I thought Regina King was a trigger warning, but you might not know why she was why going she was viral. Because we yeah. My bad. Trigger warning. If you want to get up out of here. Her son uh, maybe put the trigger 22. warning back. Go back and put the trigger warning. Um. He was he was very young um, and she was she and I'm paraphrasing. Please listen to the interview if you want to hear. She basically said that she had to accept his decision that he didn't want to be here, but she misses him and she, you know, she loves him. Uh, but that was his decision and she respects that. And yes. I said, wow, she said, I respect his choice to decide he no longer wanted to be here. And I was like. Well, like my mind literally stopped and paused time because I literally have never heard anyone speak in that way. And it's not as if I don't know other people who have had folk in their life who have also decided that they too wanted to end yeah. life on their own terms. And I've never heard anyone put it in those um, terms. Yeah. I was just like, it what was mind luck? blowing. Yeah. I was like, and it, it's so interesting as a, as a church child, what we were taught about that decision was if you do that, you are going to hell. There's no coming back from that. Oh, absolutely. Right. That was how I was taught. And then obviously, obviously as you grow, you uh, hear it's selfish and things like that. And then when you actually start talking to people who've considered it, right. We talked to, I talked to some people who consider it, some even yeah. on online and to get into the mind of people who have had those thoughts, that's it's 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 not what it was taught to me. Correct. Right. A lot of times they uh, it doesn't feel like 
as selfish moves. It feels like I'm relieving people of pressure or it's just a very personal decision. So this, yeah. I don't want to live in life no more. And I just thought that was interesting. One of my worst fears and I the, probably the worst thing about having children to me is they live their own lives. Correct. That we do not get to dictate. Oh, uh, like, especially once they're like, we don't even really get to dictate to babies. We have this, um, false sense of power yes. because they are dependent upon us, mm -hmm. but they still be like doing whatever they want to do. Crying when they want to cry, yes. sleeping when they want to sleep. And then the older they get, the more you start to realize, damn it. I have no control over this. 1000% with Isaiah driving. Now that he has his own car, He's so much more comfortable driving his car than he was my truck or Melissa's car because they're just bigger cars. Yeah. And L.A. is unlike um, other cities I've lived in. Right. Uh, if he was driving in Lakewood, Washington, he would be driving by himself already. Mm -hmm. But L.A. is a very aggressively driven city on, when you see. drive in the city streets. When I was driving in Lakewood, you don't there's not a there's no aggressiveness in right. there right and his school is actually very far from our house that's the other thing when you usually first start to drive your school ain't usually that far from right. your home but because he doesn't go to the school that's near even if he went to the school that's near our house it ain't number four or five turns seven minutes you probably could do that but i bring all that up to say very soon he can he can apply for his license his actual license in like two or three weeks and he wants to do it on the first day he's like i want to drive I want to go and I'm just like, oh my God, you can, something can happen um, to I'm, you. I'm probably going to have a strand of hair left. <laughs> I don't speak that, but that's the type of anxiety. <laughs> I ask him all the time. But the only thing that helps me is that I know he's afraid to learn to start driving. I'm like, oh, Man. great. And great. now Joe wants to learn. See, Isaiah was very late. He didn't start when he was 15 and a half like you can or 16. He started Joe now. Joe was like, I'll, I'll start now. Joe about to be 15 and a half today. The fact that you have the half. Mark, well, only because his birthday is on the 19th and the half you need for driver's ed. You can start when you're 15 and a half on oh. the date. And he was like, I mean, since Zay Zay's, you know, driving, I might as well learn. So now I'm like, Lord, y'all go. And then what you going to drive right out of my life? That's exactly what they plan on doing. Gonna go to college? They leaving y'all. I don't want them to. But they are. I want the. I want them to come right back home. I know. Come back. Oh, I told my son early on. Let, let me tell you. Oh my God! Today, little Marcus was five, and he asked me what marriage was, and I told him I said it's when mommy finds a woman for you to be with for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> And you start a fan. I said, and sometimes you start a family with that person. You have kids, you have your own home. And he's like, I, we're driving. And then I look back and I see like little tears coming down his eyes. And I was like, what's wrong? He's like, I don't want to have to leave you. And see? And I said, oh, let, let me, I said, understand this. As long as there is blood running <sighs> through my veins, huh? And breath going through my body. You can stay with your mama forever. I am going to adopt the way the Asian culture have oh, multi-generational homes. Y'all had y'all did y'all big one with that. <laughs> yeah. Now in the black community, we needed our kids to move out because we couldn't care for them. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. The Asian culture, and I believe in Hispanic culture, it's also very common Absolutely. to have multi-generational homes. Y'all yeah. did y'all big one. I'm one eighth Mexican. I'm gonna pull from that one eighth. Uh -huh. well, part I'm of it too is we don't got it for caretakers or and that's what hand that's I grew up livings. like that. Mm -hmm. My in my personal home in El Paso, great grandma Jack, grandma Ruth, my mom, uncle, uncle, aunt, Kevin, Jason, Michelle. That's three kids. Dog. Three bedroom house. Uh-huh. I want to return to my roots. Yeah. Zay Zay, go out, get married. Get that woman. Tell her in my co my father's <laughs> one eighth Hispanic what you we do. Y'all y'all come here. We listen, the best thing we got going for us, us three, you ain't had no baby yet. But you can get started. We got high. Co you know you're a homeowner. Them costs are living very high here. Oh my very god! High. What you gonna do? You got what to, you you gonna got do? to live with me. You it's got not, to live with me. Come back home, yo. Isaiah, when we went to college and he was looking at dorm rooms, he was like, "These are smaller than my room." Oh, absolutely. And that's the problem. When my, you forget that he for, lives in a mansion, and for how much a year? You don't want those problems, baby. Because mm. you leave my house. Oh, I'm threatening. Uber Eats gone. Postmates gone. Gas money. <laughs> you could stay here. You got oh, access. Oh, snap. What? Yeah. Really? 
Yes. Then no. whatever. Oh, yes. gonna say, there's no I'm not, shot. I'm not doing them like that. But I want you to know, just wake up, baby. Get you a, save your money. Come live with Come us. Come live with Listen, us. Listen, I'm not Mexican, but I do shop on Timu a lot. And I think that's in Asia. So that's enough of What's the like, Asian culture. Oh, okay. I was about to be like, I don't know what that got to do with us. Yeah, it's enough of Asian culture. It's, it's come from China. <laughs> Listen, baby. We will turn this front room into we'll section it off. We'll put up some some temporary walls. You just Man. Move down there. Or I get to my best case scenario is I get as big as Will Smith and them. Um, they got a the compound. property. Uh -huh. They got the what's the compound. Yeah. Build you a little house on the property. Absolutely. I want to mind a little guest house. Somebody on the Patreon said, What if they want his wife's family wants him to live with him? I want him to look at the situation. Unless his wife's uh family is famous and well off. If y'all gonna share a room, share a room at my daddy and then my Let mama me house. Tell you, y'all forgot I picked the wife. She unfortunately, her parents died in a car crash <laughs> when she was very young. Batman, you big <laughs> bat girl. Yes, and she has been looking for maternal figures. And lo and behold, <laughs> Angel and Tank are great at parenting. <laughs> I want them have children. We would love to hold. You want to go out? Go out. Leave the baby home with me. The baby. Oh my God. Because it's terrible. Like, me and Melissa really be, because they've been trying to be like, I want to drive. Let me drive to the park. We, Melissa's like, absolutely not. And I thought he was ready. The other day we was driving, he pulled out in the middle of the street, the car coming off fast. I said, boy, you done pushed yourself <laughs> back six months. The other day he drove by himself to Chipotle with JoJo in the car. He was like, uh, Joe's like, can you take me to Chipotle? And JJ came, and I just came home. And this is what's hard about it. Because Joe was hungry. This Josiah is eating. Let me just pause and tell y'all. <laughs> I'm 270. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I eat to my heart's content. Mm -hmm. Okay, for better, for worse. <laughs> Jojo told Melissa the other day, could you cook as if we're a family of six? There you go. So yeah. I can eat. Because huh? the leftovers don't Josh, be happening Josh, because of that one. The, Melissa made pulled pork sandwiches. Amen. Full. Mm -hmm. Big brioche Not sliders. Bread. Not sliders, big brioche. And that'd be big a lot of booty. bread, too. It's a lot of bread on the brioche. I love some brioche. She said, how many you want, Kev? I said, one. <laughs> Isaiah, I'll take two. Joe, I have three. Give me the triplet. How you know you're going to eat three full sandwiches before you eat anything? He can feel it. <laughs> Already. He can run in soccer. Listen, I don't understand how they're not eating while playing. All that running? Man, and he come he comes home and eats. So anyway, he's like, Isaiah, he went to Chipotle, ate a burrito, gets home, and was like, ah, I should have got two. The Chipotle burritos are not small. He said, Isaiah, can you take me to Chipotle real quick? And I was like, Isaiah, as Isaiah came in and was like, can I take JoJo to Chipotle? And I was like. In the car by himself? Yes. Oh, this is about to be the best of their times. They're I was like, great time. Let me, let's talk to mommy about it because I'm tired. This is when driving comes in handy. Yeah. Because you can now relieve pressure off me. Period. And Chipotle is, is not far from our house. No main streets, nothing. I text Melissa. I said, does they want to take Chipotle? To JoJo to Chipotle? She said, absolutely not. Anything could happen. So the compromise was I followed him. To Chipotle. He drove and I followed Joe, him. Joe in your car? Joe was in his car, in Isaiah's car. Oh. Wait a minute, I, why didn't Isaiah just drive him? Isaiah did drive him. In his car. No, I why, followed why, them. Why weren't you just in the car? Because he wanted to drive by himself. Oh. When I tell you we turned on that street and seeing their two little heads, the back of their heads, I turned the windshield wipers on in my eyes. <laughs> I bet you I did. Said, I said, well, you they might as well what if they, they turn don't. left and go and they just drive and go live in San Jose? Yeah. I was secretly, I'm very happy Isaiah didn't go away to school. Josiah, he's like, I'm applying to one school in North Carolina. If I get in, I'm gone. By that time, Isaiah will be a junior in college. The, well, this, is, this is the difference, though, because uh, Isaiah didn't play any sports. He played. I mean, but like, he was, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He was playing. <laughs> JoJo is going to start getting recruited. There's the difference. JoJo has a plan, but that plan is probably going to get disrupted by people being like, hey, just like them people over in Spain or Barcelona tried to take your baby already. 
Them American state, the American colleges, they yes. coming after your boy eventually. One thousand percent. Yeah. And they gonna be, but th there's a lot of American colleges. Oh, support for today's episode comes in from One Skin. Okay, if you're like me and you're ready for these warmer, hotter, sunnier days, baby. But do you know if your skin is ready? Because you probably don't know for sure. See, your skin goes through a big transition between seasons, all right? Not just on the surface, but also on a cellular level. And listen, I know you think you know, but you don't know. You've got to know. That's why it's important to nurture it from the inside out with products that do more than just protect against the sun's UV rays. Body One Skin's products are powered by their scientifically proven peptide called OS1. This peptide reduces the uh, accumulation of damaging uh, skin cells or damaged skin cells. The cells that make your skin look less resilient and more prone to lines and wrinkles. Okay, so you get that. If the skin cells are damaged and you're leaving all that on top of your skin, you're going to look. A little more wrinkly, right? You ain't going to look as smooth, as radiant as you want to. Instead of masking these issues, One Skin addresses them at a cellular level, boosting your skin's natural barrier to block, to lock in moisture and help protect against the elements. For me, moisture is a huge part of my skincare routine. I love OS1. I love this peptide because truly it does what it needs to do. They have a full line of face and body products, including OS1. Zero One Shield, an SPF that prevents UV-induced aging and repairs cellular aging all at once. For a limited time, our listeners get an, an exclusive 15% off One Skin products using the code SK when you check out at oneskin.co. No matter the season, keep your skin looking and feeling healthy with One Skin. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company by focusing on the cellular aspects of aging. One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code SK at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code SK. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Help your skin stay younger and healthier for longer with One Skin. Anyway, my son never drives without me in the car because we are good American citizens. But um, to your point, the chance of JoJo getting recruited, they wanted him to come to Italy. That's what I said. I said Barcelona, but you knew what I yeah, meant. Yeah, I know. Angel, you know I'm going to see you and I'm going to place you right. right I knew you, you knew. You knew it was in Europe. Yeah, I did. I want to believe, and it's funny because I want to believe that they'll come back home. They both have said they'll come back home, but they have not had the experience yet. I'm just really hoping that my life is so glamorous that they're like, I want to come, I want to come live in my parents' house. Their life has to be glamorous. Well, that's what I'm by default, by not default, by, uh, proximity, by proxy. Come on. Word of the day. I want them to be like, let me go back to my daddy and them house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Got a good room there. Good, strong Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. The dog is there. That's a good one for Joe. Because Monty's being held hostage. He thinks he's taking the dog outside of that house. You. Uh, he can't do that. Are you crazy? But y'all got the dog for him. That was then. You guys can get another dog. No. Please don't say that. Yeah. Because Melissa's been looking at that dog on Montecito Doodles. Who sent uh, her Instagram that? Page that you sent. No. Monty do need a dog friend though. He don't. He does. They always need a homie. They yeah. don't it's need a like homie. That's like two poops. Sugar pudding. Uh-huh. What's their names? That's right, man. We got them for each other. twice the doo-doo. Twice the dog food. Honestly, though, twice the food alone has got me reconsidering that entire second option. Twice the crap. The amount. Twice the barks. That's that. If, well, start feeding the dog regular fucking dog food and not this bougie ass. He just eats uh, uh, the little kid stuff. Uh, he ain't even on Farmer's Dog no more. He's on. Do, um, as of today. No, no, he ain't been on Farmer's in a minute, actually. I can't think of the regular. What is regular if wet food? If it's in a can. He's bougie. He need to be eating that dried up stuff that might as well be packing peanuts uh, with salt on it. He didn't like that. Bougie. He didn't like it? Didn't Lord like Jesus. Listen, Vadi Daddy, she be eating a little crumbs and crust and <laughs> crumbles. Honey, she don't know that $5 bag at Walmart. Vadi gonna live forever. Ever. I was watching the food that made us on the History Channel. Big nerd out energy. I watched Who that made us is one of the best. The movies that made us, all of the the things that made us, it's the best. Another pound. Wow. I was watching how the invention of 
uh, um, dog, pet, food? dog food, uh-huh. pet food led to the increase in pet ownership, domesticated animals. Right. Because back in the day, obviously, pets was, they, they lived scraps. outside, they left, they left scraps. But people in suburbia, suburbia America, suburban America, would uh, they cared more about their pets and didn't want them to have scraps. And because the food was able to be eaten more, uh, Purina, uh, the other ones, they was in Kibbles. a whole war. Kibble, they was in a whole war uh-huh. for for pet food supremacy. I didn't realize it was, it was a billion dollar industry. Of course. Yeah, folks loved, and we love Monty, but folks love their dog more than the, the girl on TikTok that makes her dog the food that I would eat. Uh huh. Yeah. The steak and the eggs uh-huh. and the. Does the Vaseline on the nose, cleans the teeth. I don't let Lottie see them videos. <laughs> she'll be like, what third world country do y'all have me in? Because we put Lottie outside. She's a oh part time lives outside. Uh, all right. We're running out of time here. We want it. Go ahead. This is random. I just want to let y'all know. I picked up Kev during our show because he didn't think I was strong enough. I did. I'm I trying a to add a it. lift to the show. Kev then wants to be his silly self. He's moving all around. I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. Just hold still. He nigga. was Peter trying to walk on water. He didn't believe, Angel. Right. This is this is Cirque du Soleil up in this bitch. Cirque du Soleil, Lakita. I just wanted to listen because he didn't think I could I could pick up the 270. She did pick up the 270. I'm trying to add it to the show, guys. Just FYI. She was strong. We're going to add it every other show. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That was a random. When you brought up you being 270 and how much you eat, I was like, yes, he is 270. I picked him up. Go ahead. Uh, a lot of y'all recommended Quiet on the Set. Josh made a good point. We could talk about it after. I don't even know if you're going to want to watch it, though. That boy. Oh, Me and Melissa that watched that episode. We, we watched the first two episodes last night. I didn't watch it. I just saw the little clip on the shade room. Angel. The, it just gets worse. It just Every, the third one's out. The third one came out yesterday. Oh, did it? Yeah, but I didn't even get to it because I didn't want to watch that before the bed. the third one? Is it all the same actor talking no. about? No, it's, it's everybody Basically, that everybody for that, Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider. This man was and a one-man wrecking crew of destruction and inappropriateness. Yeah, but I thought he said the I thought the boy said it was something with a bend somebody. Johnny Ben Johnny That's he's the one that went to jail. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of them were no convicted. Contest. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh but one thing I will say, and if we talk about it later, we can talk about it. Uh I am grateful. Ryan Peck. That's the man's name. Oh no, talking I'm about. talking about somebody else that, I thought it was that Josh is, Peck. Is it was the uh dialect coach. Um I'm talking about, okay, the end of the second episode, it talks about somebody completely different. But okay. Jason Handy. Jason Handy. Jason Handy's in jail. He went to jail for Yeah, yeah I was talking about what Drake Bell had Drake said. Bell was talking about Brian Peck. There we go. Uh-huh, but go ahead. Uh, yes. I was grateful. Oh, man. That that wasn't my children's experience. And also, I was grateful that me and Melissa are the parents that we going to be over in the stuff. Because that black mom... Mm-hmm. They kicked her and her son off the show uh, because she was ah, 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 yeah. ah. And even though it was unfortunate, they have a strained relationship. The kid and the mom, she said they had a strained relationship because of it. But she was like, I might have saved him from what he didn't even know. She absolutely did. But that Dan Schneider, he is sicko. He is a sicko. Dang. I didn't see the shows that he did his worst on. I was beyond childhood by then. He did his worst with uh like Ariana Grande. Uh, I mean, worst as far as on camera. Yeah. Uh, Amanda Bynes. He was way more instrumental in her career than I remember. I remember she was on all that when I was still watching it. Um, but we wasn't doing none of that stuff. We we wasn't, and and also the people that we worked with weren't on that stuff either. But I will say this is the one thing I'll, I'll, I'll say. That industry for children, as a parent, you have to work very hard to make sure your children are well rounded. And you gotta because be, it's not built for them to be. They are almost, built. And you gotta to, be well off enough know. to be able to be present for 1, that. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. You have to because they'll they'll do what they need to get the shot oh, that they need. The kids are they treat them like adults. They treat them like adults. School also is a lie. <laughs> 
Say for the most part, real. you can't go to school eight minutes at a time. Sometimes they'll be like, okay, we're going to change over the cameras. Y'all get eight minutes of school. Let's be, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's not how school, you can't get school work eight minutes here, 12 minutes here, now an hour and 20 minutes. Okay, they ain't there doing worksheets. That's not exactly how they do it. They, them school, and then sometimes you get a set teacher who's very serious. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are very serious do not be there the next day. They be. They be. Get out. We need a lax set teacher. Come on. Yeah, you you know, you got some parents that they want to make a living, unfortunately, off of their children. Yeah. So they are very a lot more laxed in allowing, a lot more lax into being accommodating. Yes. You got to not care. You got to be like a a, a Josh Martin and Carol Martin. At one thousand percent. Or Kevin and Melissa, who were like, we we work. We go to work. No. -uh. We ain't got to be a Josh and Carol. They money. go. Hey, is that what they say? I will go to work. Mm -hmm. We and then the moment my boys were like, ah, I don't really want to. All right, y'all. God bless y'all. We're going to go and send that last check over to us. God bless y'all. God keep you go with God. We going home. Mm -hmm. I, and also just to be honest, I didn't have the energy. Taking them kids all the way to Hollywood. This is pr prior to the pandemic. There wasn't no Zoom audition. You had to go to the audition. It could be in Hollywood, Santa Monica. I retired my children. They all got to work. Uh, Lil Marcus was on a Netflix show. The twins did a uh, a commercial. And I said, out of the four of us, I'm the most talented. So <laughs> I would prefer to put my energy to my audition. So you all are now retired. That's what I was like. I told, I'm not go. I'm not finna be driving over this hill every Hell day. No. Uh -huh. My home, uh, Jenna Ortega's mom. Uh, Jenna Ortega is a huge star now. Yeah. Her and Zay did Little Rascals together. Her mom is a nurse, and they live near Palm Springs. And her dad is something in law enforcement, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. They was driving from Palm Springs in for oh, auditions no. and driving back. Oh no. To make sure Jenna made it, I said, "Listen, Matthew Hi. knows I am not Joe Jackson. I am not." I'm tired, y'all. And when you do that much of a sacrifice, you do be it. Th then you really are like, now if we doing this, then we doing this, and you gonna be doing the job that they asked Absolutely. you to do. Yada yada yada. I ain't got time for that. I'll make the money. Y'all can decide later on. I told little Marcus, you know, he does the theater plays and whatnot and what have you. I said, when I think that you could start booking stuff, that's when we gonna do it. But and we you, not you gambling. Be by then. You and if you want to come back to it nineteen twenty when you are an adult and your brain's closer to being fully formed. Mm -hmm. Welcome. It'll be here for you. Yeah. But while you're a child, you I don't like how they was they your children could easily be entitled because they'll give you whatever you need to do to to get that shot. Uh uh. -uh. I remember the last time, and I know I said this before. I'm gonna say it again. They offered to get JoJo a puppy. I said we'll we we gonna we gonna go ahead and go home. Yeah. Y'all we not finna do. Ain't no y'all not bring this boy no puppies to do these lines. He no. could go home and and be regular. Yeah. No. I said I'm gonna get you the SAG eligible because I don't want to pay your dues either. We gonna get Fair. right there and stop. And then that way, when you get older, if you want to start doing, he wants to do voice acting anyway. So I don't hey, know. Ain't, no, ain't, no, ain't no problem. Ain't no problem. Ain't no problem. Doing. All right, y'all. We gone. We love y'all. Pull up on us if you live in Raleigh or Birmingham, or Philly or Detroit. Yeah, Those are the cities you can still buy. Out. Atlanta sold out. Sorry, you can guys. still buy tickets there. Uh, the show is a good time. We love y'all. We appreciate your support. Congratulations to Angel again. If you want to hear the whole story of her winning, that is on the bonus that is already up. Um, on the Patreon. Yeah. It's actually before this episode. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We'll see you later. Thank you guys. Bye. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another one. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another one. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another thing of fire. fire. Uh, uh, uh. Here's another bang of fire uh, With my boy Kevin on stage And that chick angel